Well, just before I speak, um, you might like to listen to this fun song for Father's Day. Enjoy. Every day you keep me safe and warm and loved and fed But two days your special day, it was my turn instead So I got up at 5 a.m., I've been working hard since then Some things I didn't get quite right, next year I'll try again Just for you I did my best to cut my own hair Some places came out pretty good and some are kind of bare I washed all your nicest clothes but the washer wasn't free so I use the dishwasher, pretty smart of me. Remember no one's perfect, every kid has faults. Remember it's the thought that counts more than the results. My heart was in the right place even though I did it wrong. It was all to say on Father's Day my love for you is strong. I vacuumed really quietly, I didn't use the power. I cleaned your dirty iPad screen, I held it in the shower. I painted all the ceilings, it was easy with the mop. Now the carpet's painted too with cool rainbow drops. I answered all your work emails with just leave me alone. And we gave a prince from Scandinavia a loan. I watered all the houseplants with the garden hose. I forgot to turn it off, sometimes that's how it goes. Remember no one's perfect, every kid has faults. Remember it's the thought that counts more than the results. My heart was in the right place even though I did it wrong. It was all to say on Father's Day my love for you is strong. Your car shiny inside and out with lots of olive oil. Who knew that oatmeal splatters up so high and far on boil? I tried to make you orange juice, but I spilled it on the floor. I tried to fry you bacon, we don't have a stove no more. Since you can't really cook this week, I called the pizza place. I emptied out the fridge and freezer so there's enough space. They should be here any time, two dozen pizza pies. I paid with your credit card, I hope that you're surprised. Remember no one's perfect, every kid has faults. Remember it's the thought that counts more than the results. My heart was in the right place even though I did it wrong. It was all to say on Father's Day my love for you is strong. My heart was in the right place even though I did it wrong. It was all to say on Father's Day my love for you is strong. It was all to say on Father's Day my love for you is strong. Song drops. <laughs> it's good fun. So Back in April of last year, I preached a sermon called Orphans Adopted. It was actually when Ben and Aaron were baptised. And as it's Father's Day today, I, I just wanted to speak to you again on this whole subject of being orphans adopted. You know, some of us have had the opportunity to see the Watutu uh, Children's Choir um, at uh, at Coastlands and uh, they they come from Uganda and the choir is made up of orphans who are living in this Christian community which looks after them and it's uh, it really is good to see their smiling faces and the joy that they they have of, of, of what God has done for them and every time we sing the song No Longer Slaves I think of them dancing and singing it with such meaning. Orphans who are no longer in fear of what direction their lives might take them, but children of God who know their purpose, know their destiny. It's a wonderful thing. And being an orphan in some parts of the world really is a terrible thing. They're subject to abuse, subject to exploitation from evil people, there's no one looking out for them and uh, such orphans 
will become self-sufficient, they'll become self-reliant, they'll be defensive, they'll be fearful. They've got no security, they've got no significance, they've got no one who loves them, no one to accept them. They are likely to feel anxious and fearful and guilty and ashamed. And particularly if they have had to steal to survive or they've been forced to do things that they wouldn't really want to be doing. They'll feel rejected, they'll feel weak, they'll feel powerless. They may be angry and they may be depressed. Orphans may feel these things, uh, but you know what, every one can feel like that. In fact, we could say that there is something of an orphan mentality in our world today because as human beings we, we were created in God's image and we were wired to relate with God. You know, there is a capacity within every one of us to connect with God. In fact, there is a spiritual vacuum within us uh, that needs to connect to God. God's put it there and uh, it's only him that can actually fill that void within us. We're like orphans if we don't have God as our father. And like orphans, we will experience anxiety and fear and guilt and shame and rejection and powerlessness uh, and anger and all sorts of negative emotions because we haven't got God as our father. We're like an orphan without God. And we try to be self-reliant and we try to be self-sufficient, but we weren't designed to be that way. We were designed to be children of God. We were designed to have a wonderful relationship with our God in heaven, our Father. We were designed to rely on him. We were designed to find our provision from him, our guidance, our power, our acceptance, our peace, our forgiveness, our protection, our security, our significance. It, it all comes from God, who is our Father in heaven. You know, there is a, a program on TV that appears periodically and it's called Long Lost Families. And this program tries to track down relatives of people who were adopted often as babies and they have no idea who their parents are or why they were adopted. I mean, recently they did a couple of programs on people who were known as foundlings, people who were abandoned by their parents. Uh, in some location somewhere uh, and there's no clue as to who their parents are at all and you can see the pain of, of not knowing why they were abandoned by their parents not knowing who their natural family is and just needing to know some answers and there are usually lots of tears in these programs. And <laughs> I find myself with lots of tears too, as people are reunited with a, with a mother or a father or a sister or a brother that they, they, hadn't, they didn't know they had. And there's long hugs and lots of getting to know each other that takes place. They find out after years of, of not knowing why they were separated from their parents and they find a family that they didn't know they had. Now at a spiritual level, we are separated from God. And it can take years to know why that is. And then someone comes along and comes into our lives and, and explains that we have a long lost family, a father, who loves us, brothers and sisters who are waiting to welcome us into the family. We find out that the, the reason that we're separated from all of this is, is, is something called sin. 
It, it's missing the mark of God's standards. And, and, and sin separates us from God. And we learn that we have a brother called Jesus who lived a sinless life when he was here on earth 2000 years ago and who died on our behalf for our sin. And we learn that when we believe that Jesus died for our sin, we can find forgiveness and a clean sheet and, and a fresh start and that there is a, a reconciliation to God, our heavenly father. And we learn that Jesus rose from the dead and we too will be raised from the dead when we die to everlasting life. And we learn that we can start experiencing the eternal life that Jesus came to bring. That we now have a huge family of, of brothers and sisters who have also been reconciled to God. And there are often tears of joy when we find this long lost family. And there's certainly a party in heaven when this takes place. And the fundamental differences between a child who is an orphan and a child who has parents are security, significance, and acceptance. And these things are so fundamental to us as well. As spiritual orphans, we try to find these fundamental things from the wrong places. We look for security in, in money or jobs or status or houses or our reputation or being recognized for something. And we, we look for significance through performing well in various situations or accomplishing things. We look for acceptance through how we look or how we may be admired. However, these fundamental things are really only met when we know God as our Father. God brings us total security. We may lose everything we have, but God is still there. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our shield. He is our strong tower. His love is constant and is everlasting. God brings us total significance. We don't have to accomplish things to be significant because we have significance in our identity with him. We actually become salt and light to the world. You know, God brings us total acceptance. We are adopted into God's family. We are loved unconditionally by God. We are no longer orphans, but God has adopted us into his family because Jesus died and rose again for us. And this is just amazing grace. And those of us who are Christians who are listening to this today need to guard against reverting to an orphan mentality self-reliance, self-sufficiency. It, it will only lead to anxiety and fear and guilt and powerlessness and a whole lot of other negative emotions. We are not orphans. We are children of our Father in heaven who provides for us guides us, empowers us, accepts us, comforts us, for, forgives us, protects us, shapes us for significance. So maybe some of us this morning need to cry out again, Abba, 
Father. May the Holy Spirit fill us again so that by him, by his Holy Spirit, we will know afresh that we are sons and daughters of the living God, that all things work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. We are not orphans, we are sons and daughters. And so Romans chapter 8, in the message version, reads like this. This resurrection life you received from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant, greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? God's Spirit touching our spirits and, and confirms who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are, father and children. And we know we are going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him. Right at the end of our service today, uh, we're going to have an opportunity of an extended period of prayer um, to be able to um, just again reconnect with God as our Father uh, and enjoy that relationship and to savour it uh, because it's such an important thing, particularly in uh, the hard times that many of us are facing right now. But let me just briefly pray. Father, I just thank you that you are our Father in heaven. Thank you for all that that means. Thank you that you are a good, good Father. And we just want to say again, Lord, we love you. And we, we pray that whatever we are going through right now, that we will know through your Holy Spirit that you are our Father, that you are our loving Father in heaven. Thank you. Amen. <laughs>